In this video, we are going to be using Adobe Illustrator to create ourselves this vintage laundry room sign. Now to create this document, you will need to go online to a website called heritagetype.com and you'll need to download the vintage font bundle. At the moment, it's 50% off, so only 49 bucks. I read some really good reviews about this and I saw some awesome signs that you could make with this bundle. So that's why I downloaded it. Um, if I just click on this picture, there's a bit of an example you can see in the background here, all the different kinds of fonts you're going to get. And all those little ornaments that you can see in the flowers and whatnot, they come with the pack as well. As you can see, there's over 150 graphic elements. So there's heaps of goodies in there to play with and you can make some pretty awesome stuff with them. Okay, so I highly recommend that you download this vintage font bundle so you can follow along with the rest of this tutorial. Uh, when you download it, you'll get some folders that look a bit like this. So the different themes basically that you get in the pack. The one that you need to work with today is the Royal Signage theme. Okay, so open that up. And the first thing you're going to need to do is go to the fonts folder and install the open type font. The open type font looks the same as the true type font, but the open type is a font that can be used on both Windows and Mac computers alike. Okay, so open it up, click install, and you'll get this font installed onto your computer. Comes with the normal font that you can see here, as well as the variants of each letter. So you get those little fancy flicks and curls on the end of each letter if you want to do something a little bit fancy. Okay, it comes with numbers and a few special characters as well, which is quite handy. All right, so once you've got the Royal Signage font installed, you can basically um, pop over to Illustrator again and get started on making this sign. So I'm going to go to File and New. And from the Print Templates up the top, I'm going to select A4. And I'm changing the orientation to Landscape. And then I'll click Create. So we've got an A4 landscape page ready for us to make our design on. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the red texture background that comes in this Royal Signage Pack. Okay, so when you download your pack inside the Royal Signage folder, you get a few extras. Okay, you get background textures, ornaments and templates. I'll show you what's in each of these folders in a moment, but for now, the background texture is what we're looking at. Simply pick that up, drag it down to Illustrator and drop it on your page. Doesn't quite fit the A4 page, so give it a resize just by using your selection tool and pulling the corners out, and you'll get this cool background um, on your page. Now it's a little bit bright for me, so what I want to do is just darken a little bit by using a black rectangle over the top of it. So grab your rectangle tool, change the fill. Uh, I'm going to actually type in a code here for the fill. It's not quite black that I want. I want 75% cyan. 68 for magenta, 67 for yellow, and 90 for black. So that gives us a dark color, but not quite black. That's the fill, the stroke can just be turned off. We don't need a border. And I'm gonna simply draw from the top left corner down to the bottom right corner. And it'll come out with basically a black box over your page. I'm just gonna change the opacity now from 100% to 30%, so it becomes see-through. And you can see now that you've got a bit more of a dull background. If I just go back to the layers for a sec and hide what I just put on. So you can see the original and now the new one. All right. Just tones it down a little bit, not quite as bright. I'm going to rename layer one now to a background. And I'm going to lock it into place so we don't touch that anymore. I'll go down the bottom of that panel and make a new layer. So I've got layer two here now. And I'm going to call this border. What I'm going to do next is put a border around my page. Um, and I'm going to use another item from this vintage font bundle. So in the Royal Signage section in Extras, you'll see that there's a folder called Ornaments. And in Ornaments, you've got a few different options of what you can open here. Since I'm using an Adobe program, I'm going to open up the Ornaments in Adobe. Okay, now Ornaments, they're just little vector files that have been created for you. You can just copy and paste them into your own design. All right, so what I'm looking for is a border. I think the one on the outside there is a bit too busy for my liking, so I'm going to go to this inside border here. Simply copy it. Go back to my tab up here and go to Edit, Paste. And you can see that you get this border around your page. A little bit big at the moment, so re give it a resize. Something like 
Oh, that there looks good. You could do the exact measurements so that there's an even gap around every side of the page, but I'm just eyeballing it. And that looks pretty good. So that's a nice simple border to put around your page. It's already made for you. Okay, so I'll lock that layer into place. I'm going to make another new layer now, and I'm going to call this Laundry Room. What we're going to do now is put some big text up the top here. So grab your text tool in your properties, change your font. It's on Myriad Pro at the moment. I'm going to type in Royal Signage. This is the font I just downloaded before. Okay, so we're going to have Royal Signage. The fill color, just choose the same as the border up here. Okay, so I'm going to write in laundry room. Actually, I'll just write the word laundry to start with. I'm going to do two separate text boxes. I'm going to make this nice and big. Okay, so you can change the font down here in your properties. I'm going to put it up to a size 150. And I'll just use my selection tool to move that down a little bit. Okay, so you can see this royal signage font looking pretty cool. If you didn't put a capital L in, it would probably look like that. So make sure you do a capital L so you get the fancy uh, flicks on the word laundry there. Next thing I'm going to do is just grab my eyedropper tool and change the color by selecting the border color at the top there. Okay, so now the colors match one another. And what I might do as well, I've just realized the Y in laundry, I want to make it look fancy like the L. So another way to do it, instead of making it a capital, I'll just highlight it with my text tool. And you can see the variant pop up in the bottom right corner. Just click on it and you get this cool little flick coming off the bottom of the Y. Makes it look pretty fancy. Uh, so that's the word laundry. That looks good. In a separate text box now, I'm just going to write the word room. Again with a capital R. I'm going to hit the eyedropper tool. Actually, I'll just click off it first. Then grab the eyedropper tool and change it to the same color as laundry. With my text tool, highlight the M and pick the variant for the M so you get the little flick coming off the bottom of the M. And I might change the size of this uh, from 150 point to, let's say, 100. Press Enter. Just using your selection tool now, move it up underneath the word laundry. Basically going to get these two little flicks in line with one another. That looks pretty good. Okay, so you can select both of those text boxes by holding shift and clicking on them and we're going to try and get it in the center of the page to get it in the center i might have to press ctrl r and get my rulers up um yeah, we need to be in millimeters here because i know my page is 297 millimeters across so i'm going to drag a ruler onto the page and where it says the x value here i'm going to change it to 297-2 so that it's 297 millimeters divided by two. I've now got my ruler in the middle of my page. So now we can position this text just by nudging it across into the center, like so. That looks pretty good. One thing missing from the laundry room, I think, is a shadow just to make it pop out off the background. So I'm going to select both text boxes again and go to Edit Copy. And I'll go to Edit Paste. Actually, I won't do that. I'll go edit, paste in place. That will paste it right on top of the original. And I'm going to change the fill color here to black. And I'm going to use my arrow keys to just nudge it down and to the right a little bit. Now, I want the black to go behind the cream colored text that we've already got. So in my layers panel, I'll just expand the laundry room layer and highlight the black there and just put it below the cream colored text. So now you can see it's got a nice uh, drop shadow behind the text, making it pop out off the background. If you wanted to, you could um, change the opacity of that black shadow just over here to tone it down a little bit if you think it's a little bit harsh. So you'd have to go to your layers and probably lock the original layers there and then go and select the two shadow layers. You can see that they're highlighted in green there, so they're selected. Go to the properties and just drop the opacity some reason i thought that was changing the text color it's not but um you can yeah drop it at 90 percent that makes it look pretty good a little bit more rustic not quite as um, intense as that black we saw originally all right so that has got the laundry room looking pretty good i don't think there's anything more that i'd do to that so i'll go and lock that layer and make another new layer 
Uh, this time I'm going to put in a little one dollar sign down here. All right, and the way I'm going to do that is going to go back to my ornaments. And I'm going to choose this circle here with the frilly um, ends on the left and the right. I'll just go to edit and copy. Then edit, paste. Bring it down, making sure it's in the center of the page like so. I'll hold Alt and Shift while I resize this with my selection tool. So bring it up to about there. That looks reasonable. Actually, probably a bit too big. I'll go a little bit smaller. Go there for now. Okay, we can always resize this a bit later. Uh, we're going to grab our text tool and we're going to write off to the side here $1. Now we need to get this to fit inside of that circle nicely in the middle. So let's go to our properties and just play with the size there until we get it looking good. That's not a bad size. That's size 70. So instead of having the um, black as the fill color there, what I want to do is just reveal the background beneath it. So I want to cut this $1 shape out. So with my selection tool, I'm just going to right click on my $1 there and choose Create Outlines. Then I'm going to select both the $1 text and then hold Shift and select the ornament behind it. And over in my properties, I've got this Pathfinder tool here. If you can't see the Pathfinder, just go to your window and you can pick up the Pathfinder panel. And I want to select this option here that says Exclude. And basically, that's just going to cut out the $1 sign for me. Okay, and leave the other shape there. So I'm going to click on it now and just recolor it. Um, if I just press the letter I, I'll just select the border color. Okay, so you've got that nice creamy color back in there. And to finish off with, I just want to put Dirty Duds Done Dirt Cheap down the bottom. So that's just done in text box. I'll grab your text tool again. Click on the page there. And I'm going to write this all in lowercase. I don't want the fancy um, curls and swirls on my letters. So Dirty Duds on one line. Press Enter. Write Done Dirt Cheap on the next line. Highlight it all and center align it. Move it back over a bit here. It doesn't quite fit in nicely there, so we'll play around with a few things. I'm going to play with the leading here. It's at 84 at the moment. The leading is just the space between um, each line of text. It's like line spacing. I'm going to change it from 84 to 43. Oops. 43. Enter. Yeah, that's all right for now because we're going to drop the size as well. Uh, I'm going to change Dirty Duds to size 80. And I want done dirt cheap a bit smaller. Okay, so done dirt cheap. I'm going to make size 53. I'm not pulling random numbers out of my head there. I have already measured this up before I started the tutorial. That's how I knew what size I wanted there. Uh, now the color, again, just grab your eyedropper tool and choose the border. You just want that creamy color once more. That's starting to look pretty good. I'm going to put a shadow behind it like I did here with this top text. Um, so just click on the text and copy it, paste it in place, change its fill color there to black, and using your arrow keys, just nudge it down and to the right a little bit. Back in your layers, just switch that around um, so the cream color is in front of the black color. Now I just realized this text is on the wrong layer. I need to quickly cut that out, so I'll highlight it. Control X to cut it out. Now layer 4 was our $1 symbol. And then I'll make another new layer called Dirty Duds. Oops, can't spell. There we go. And now I'll just paste it back in place. That's got it back in where it needs to be. Uh, that looks pretty good, I think. Shadow is a little bit harsh still because we haven't dropped its opacity. So let's change that shadow opacity to 90 percent oops and that looks pretty consistent with the top of the page there now we want to get that one dollar ornament in a halfway position between laundry room and dirty duds so i'm just going to eyeball it somewhere about there looks good i'm going to get rid of this guide now i don't need that anymore so i'll just i think i've locked that into place so i'll just click on it now Delete it. That looks good. 
Um, I don't think there's too much more we can do. Let's go back and look at the original for a sec. Yeah, it looks good. And then back to this one. Not too bad. Okay, I might have made my $1 a little bit too big, but apart from that, it looks very similar to the original. So that's how you create a simple vintage laundry room sign in Illustrator using this awesome vintage font bundle from Heritage Type. I will provide a link to this in the description, so feel free to click on that and go and download yourself a copy. I'll do some more video tutorials in the coming days um, using the same font bundle. Okay, but this is just a very simple start to get you going. I'll see you in the next video.